Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to a new edition of Business Insider. President Assisi has recently directed the government to grant a golden license to all investors, applicants uh, for three months to facilitate the procedures for establishing priority projects uh, for the country. The need to gain approval from multiple government bodies. The licensing window can be extended for additional, an additional uh, uh, three uh, months and in efforts to uh, boost the investment climates uh, in Egypt. Uh, Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa uh, Madbouli has met with the CEO of the General Authority for Investment and uh, Free Zones, uh, Hussein Heba, uh, and uh, reviewed some procedures and measures to improve the investment climate in Egypt, including uh, the mechanism for allocating land for investment projects uh, and developing the system for issuing the required licenses. We'll be talking about uh, uh, efforts here in Egypt to improve the investment uh, climate and specifically uh, when it comes to the uh, licenses and the golden license in this edition of Business Insider. But first here is a look at our major stories for this uh, week. President Assisi and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi witnessed on Wednesday the signing of a number of memoranda of understanding MOUs between the two countries. The signed agreements include cooperation pacts between Egypt and India in the field of cybersecurity. Minister of Communications and Information Technology Amr Talat signed the agreement on the Egyptian side. Also, two MOUs were signed, the first signed by the Agriculture uh, Minister in the sphere of Culture and Agriculture, and the second MOU was signed between Egypt's Foreign Minister Samah Shukri and the Indian uh, um, Sports Minister, including cooperation in youth uh, affairs. Uh, also, a cooperation pact was signed between the two countries in the sphere of media and radio. Uh, the President said today that Egypt and India are seeking to upgrade bilateral ties to a strategic partnership. A CC currently on a visit to India spoke during a press conference of what he called integrated capabilities of Egypt and India that could lead to a solid system in the face of common challenges and the emerging global crises such as energy and food. Uh, CC is in India as a guest of honor in a ceremony to mark the Republic Day, which falls on January 26th this year, Cairo and New Delhi marked 75 years of diplomatic relations. And Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli chaired a meeting on Tuesday to follow up on the implementation status of service and development projects underway in Alexandria. The meeting covered drinking water and sanitation projects pursued in the governorate to fulfill its current and future development needs. It also highlights the importance attached by the political leadership to turning the North Coastal Governorate uh, uh, um, into an attractive spot for various investments in, uh, across many sectors, including tourism, service, um, industrial uh, sectors, and others. Uh, the meeting also highlighted the government's strong commitment to improving slum areas uh, in coordination with the slums development funds. And under the auspices of His Excellency, the President, uh, the CIB of the Cairo International Book Fair kicked off uh, its activities uh, on Wednesday and was launched by the Prime Minister and uh, the activities will take part from January 25th uh, to February 6th uh, at the Egypt International Exhibition Center, the EIEC, under the title, The Name of Egypt, Together We Read, We Think, We Create. The public will be able to visit the book fair starting Thursday and tour the CIBF's different halls. The CIBF is open to visitors on Thursdays and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. and from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekdays. 
BC IBF is held on an area of 80,000 square meters in five pavilions uh, with the participation of 1,047 Egyptian, Arab and foreign publishers and agencies from 53 countries. Hungary and the Dominican Republic will also be taking part in the event for the very first time. The fair will feature cultural programs that include nearly 500 different activities that entrench the Egyptian cultural identity. Jordan will be this year's guest of honor. The late Egyptian poet Salah Jahin will be the personality of the year, while the Egyptian writer Kamil Kleini, who has pioneered uh, children's literature across the Arab world, will be the personality of the year at the children's exhibition. Inaugurated in 1969 and organized by the General Egyptian Book Organization, the CIBF is one of the largest in the world and oldest, and is the oldest in the Arab world, bringing hundreds of booksellers locally and worldwide. Well, time now for a short break, dear viewers, and when we come back, we will be introducing you to our distinguished guests here. Watch a report about our topic and start our discussion. Please stay with us. Welcome back, dear viewers, and thank you for staying with us, uh, with us here in the studio. Is Dr. Tasneem Khalil, the Senior Advisor uh, for Business Registration and Licensing. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Tasneem, for joining us. And allow us, please, and dear viewers, allow us to watch a report uh, about our main topic for the night, uh, uh, the golden license and uh, efforts to uh, improve the investment climate here in Egypt and attract uh, more local and uh, foreign investments. So please uh, stay with us. The cabinet under Prime Minister Mustafa Medbouli approved during a meeting in the new administrative capital a number of decisions to improve business climate and offer new investment facilities. The decisions included an approval on amendments of some provisions of the investment law to facilitate conditions for projects seeking to obtain golden license. CEO of the General Authority for Investment and Free Zones, Mohammed Abdul Wahab, said the cabinet's approval of the amendments falls within the framework of the state's strategy to secure encouraging investment climate and expand the establishment of development projects which contribute to replacing imports through promoting local components. He added that the higher committee examining applications for golden license approved eight investment projects in preparation for referring them to the cabinet. The cabinet also approved another decision to grant incentives to companies operating in the auto feeding engineering service domain. Companies applying for the government's golden license for industry will no longer need to meet a minimum issued capital requirement. Companies previously needed to have issued capital of at least 20% of investment cost of their projects to qualify for a golden license, but many investors lobbied against the requirement. Thank you, uh, Abiy Hussain and Rasha Abdul Hamid, for this report uh, back here in the studio with uh, our distinguished guest, Dr. Tasneem Khalil. And uh, she is uh, the uh, senior uh, advisor uh, for uh, the business registration and licensing. And Dr. Tasneem, I want to start first, please, uh, by the president's recent directives uh, that he gave to the government to grant a golden license to all investor applicants uh, for three months to facilitate the procedures for establishing priority projects for uh, the country. How did you see that uh, move? Uh, th thank you for the kind introduction. Allow me just uh, in a nutshell to talk about the, um, the golden license. The golden license is not uh, a new concept in uh, by the way, in the laws, it's embedded in the investment law 72 for 2017 in Article um, uh, 20, and also it had been articulated in 42 and 43. These are the articles that articulated and stated that there must be a golden license. But it was not yet uh, executed. 
according to which there were a law which is it's a prime minister decree which is 56 for 2022 that declared out loud what is a golden license and recently it has been implementing due to different economic situation that all investors are facing not only in Egypt it's all over the world mm. can you just if we go backward a little bit, we found that the coronavirus came after it, Ukraine war mm. and other economic situation. It's a global problem, according to which the Egyptian economy was, despite the fact other economies were declining, the Egyptian mm. economy, by the way, in the coronavirus, it's, it, it was be way better than others and right. it grows and it had better growth rate. Proved very re resilient indeed. Yes, yes. yes. And, and that was great. Even now, Despite any fact, we can see we are better than other European countries and other countries that could not face this. So according to which our presidential authorities and our government, they are very well aware about the competent and about other neighborhood, what they're doing on. For example, Saudi Arabia started this path, Dubai and other two, by the way, they mm. all these uh, neighborhood countries, they're going through the stage. And as as we always know that Egypt is um, is a core for investment for others, not only because we have a huge population, uh, employment, uh, low price for the employment, and not only that, but also um, a regional um, location that allows right. others of to course. come. Perfect geographical location, that absolutely, sure. Definitely, and we cannot ignore the trade agreements and the investment agreements we do have. I think uh, the ministries, the government had made a great effort in having a trade and a free trade agreements with different countries in the uh, European Union, for example, free trade agreement, the world, every, every, yeah, the Arab world and so on. Yeah. According to which all of these have facilitated that the investment became a core force. So all these became true when our president have issued this as a way to increase the investment as the only way to have a sustainable economic is to have a real industry. And this is what he have issued. Um, you, so you, you know, you mentioned, Dr. Tasneem, uh, the geographical location and the um, uh, skilled uh, labor. The president has also repeatedly said that he wants the business community to take full advantage of uh, our uh, pro uh, the, the plus side that we have in other areas like the energy pricing and like the Definitely. state facilities uh, the, 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 faci uh, the facilitation the state uh, is given and the, and the infrastructure can you talk to us through these main, uh, two main points definitely yes allow me just to say when you're just giving me as a simple and not shy words you've stated they're not you s you talk them very um, organized actually first of all you talked yeah <laughs> you talked about um, two things the cost of energy yes which is really uh, low compared to others and this is make the total cost of any uh, the investment cost less because if here the overheads would be less as the cost of energy is less so if when you're having the industry or whatsoever thing your business you're having part of your um, part of the investment you're putting is uh, the energy. So if you have subsidized energy or a low cost of energy, this is a kind of subsidy, by the way. Yes. The other way around is their uh, utilities. Mm. Talking about utilities, we must first acknowledge the great success that Egypt has made in roads and the infrastructure. Uh, one of the pioneer uh, industrial zones Beni Suaif, for example, there were a road, when this road had initiated international road, when it became to life and they have established it, the utilities and number of factories in this zone have increased. And we're not talking about simple, small, medium enterprises. We're talking about a huge investment there. There are multinational corporations. It's a foreign direct investment have been developed in this mm. area mm. not only because we have low energy mm. prices of energy we've always been having a low price of energy but the problem was the roads the utilities right. the infrastructure the right. infrastructure mm. and uh, allow me to say something else mm. the cause of the awareness of the need of the utilities the uh, uh, there was a prime minister decision uh, yesterday regarding yeah. uh, giving a grace period for the factories that they do not uh, they don't have a full utilized lands mm -hmm. uh, yeah that mm -hmm. was really interesting because 
We'll, we'll get to, uh, to yesterday's <laughs> uh, meeting. You, I, I think you're referring to the meeting between the Prime Minister and the CEO of the, um, uh, for the Free Zones uh, Authority, yes, right? Yes, yes, okay. definitely. And with the Minister of Trade and Industry, definitely we'll, that was very We'll advice. get to that. Uh, uh, Dr. Tasneem, uh, also uh, experts are saying that granting the golden license is a good thing, uh, but that the agreement with the investor must achieve the goal the main goal is the creation of jobs, the creation of um, job opportunities. How do you see this this going? I mean, is every project gonna, uh, uh, every golden license going to lead to big job creation? How do we make sure that you know this is the path we're taking? When when they stay, um, it's stipulated in uh, the golden license. Actually, Galfi had made a great work where establishing a guideline for the uh, golden license. It's a, mm. and it's. Um, established in uh, the, um, several languages actually mm. it's not only Arabic or English or French there are mm. several languages which is a great thing mm. when we return back to the core point you've just stated is that um, the uh, the employment rate yeah actually uh, it, it does not only stated that the high employment rate because due to the unforeseen circumstances that all the world is passing through we have a high unemployment rate, according to which, as a way of supporting people, that to give a golden license for factories that are going to make employment. And this shows how the, the government is trying to give subsidy to the um, citizens, but indirect manner, meaning instead of giving the man money in his hand, I will support the factory so that people go to work and it be, become better and develop and get better education and thus make a real developing and sustainable development rather than giving just subsidies in the hands. So this is a brilliant idea. Yeah. The other hand is that they have said, stated that the high technological level of uh, industries are also uh, supported by ha having a golden license. Mm. Also, there are specific, um, they have allocated it in different places. We first regarding the activity itself, if mm. it's high tech or uh, if it's a high tech uh, activity, or if it's um, this kind of activity of this kind of production, where decrease the gap between the experts and inputs. This is regarding activity. Second part is the geographical allocations. Mm. As per your kind knowledge and others, all people watching, uh, the geographical allocation, sir, is crucial. There are some, because the word sustainable development became crucial. It's not only the SDGs or something like that. It's not. It's more than this. It became the Egyptian government became knowledgeable about it and became implementing it. So development does not even, does not mean just the activity. It means also the geographical allocation. Y you mean that has to be evenly distributed, or that all uh, citizens, uh, be it in Upper Egypt and rural areas, in different uh, right uh, thinly sir. located areas. They have to benefit from, from that as well. Definitely, right. sir. That's why they give also golden license for people who mm. could operate in these far places mm. as a way of giving them incentives mm. to operate. This is called special incentives, sir. This is right. exactly what I was going to say. Right. And the last not least, which is the employment rate. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, uh, Dr. Tasneem, we, we've seen that uh, 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 many sectors where, where the golden license is being uh, uh, applied. What do you th uh, which sectors do you think um, uh, will help the creation of, of more jobs, which is the main goal, I guess, alongside, of course, attracting um, foreign and local uh, direct investments? Um, for me, uh, I always think about uh, if when you define the word now, for example, by the way, Egypt is suffering from the Ukraine and Russian uh, war. Not, not direct, but indirectly, because if you double check Charm Sheikh and other places, we used to have a high tourist rate uh, regarding the Russian people. So indirectly, unfortunately, we are really affected with that, despite the fact of exporting other wheat and something like that for the essentials. For me, I think that nothing means that you're going to be isolated from other continent. But if we choose the place where, for example, the industry, because the industry, if you have your own industry, and we do have the raw materials, so the bending, being independent, is way better. 
So thinking about being independent, I would rather prefer, despite the fact that they have in the health, they have in the tourism, they have in uh, electricity, they have in the green uh, hydrogen and so on. Mm. Uh, all these uh, projects are included in the mm. golden license. Mm. But I would rather prefer having it or uh, concentrating about uh, mm. industry. It's very right. better. Right. It's and and better. Dr. Tasneem, uh, um, I guess you are leading us to, to the START initiative mm -hmm. because, uh, I mean, this initiative uh, um, is supposed to depend, as we uh, uh, understand, on locally uh, manufactured uh, uh, components and, uh, and, and raw m material. So where can we have the connection between uh, the START initiative and the Golden uh, 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 License? Uh, okay, as far as I know, when uh, there were um, uh, two months ago, uh, we have the Federation of Egyptian Industries have uh, their anniversary of being 100 years of mm. uh, industry, mm. where this initiative became, uh, uh, it, had, it, it started actually a year before it or yani more than this, but this initiative shows the outcomes of it in this uh, ceremony. They uh, declared the, uh, some great uh, opportunities and some great um, alliance mm. with local uh, manufacturer in order mm. to uh, um, develop. Mm. Let me talk simple as what is uh, IBDA, as, yes. it's, uh, yeah. as it's a start. Yeah. Uh, when, you're, when the Egyptian government have an alliance the gap analysis between what we export and when we import, we found out that there are some uh, crucial or important um, activities or... Ra raw material? Raw, n no, sir, commodities okay. that we shall have and we shall develop here. Mm. Why? For the reason of that you should not be depending on others on right. this crucial stuff. Mm. According to which the Egyptian government also was trying to increase the local manufacturing and the local component. And uh, this was the start point. Yeah. Where they said, for example, we don't have factories for the motor mm -hmm. to uh, do the motor. We have factories to do the machine itself, the washing machine or whatsoever, or the home machines, but we don't have the motor itself. Yeah. So when you double check, you found that the motor is the real technology. This is the real industry. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they said, no, we need to, get, uh, uh, to make the motor for example. Mm. So why is this not working because of the economics of scale? Meaning that in order to develop motor, you have to develop motor with specific uh, aspects. So specific aspects mean that you're going to have a certain commodity, for example, a machine. Mm. This for a machine, it has certain aspects for this motor. So how many motors do you need for, mm. a, mach for a machinery line? Mm. Mm. So it will not be useful if you mm. are doing, for example, 200 machines mm. or per day. Or but, but we can make some of the components, right? Yes, some of the components yes. here at home. No, the other idea is that they started is that they will make a big factory for the motors. Mm. And this motor shall uh, be uh, make, um, shall go to other factories that they are exporting this. Mm. So instead of having one factory doing it, mm. all the factories that need it must mm. come together and develop mm. one motor factory to serve mm. all of them. Okay. So it's a backward integration of industry, mm. meaning that you, you increase the local components, you yeah. make it a better value, yeah. and you develop it. And this is the main idea, which is alliance. It's impossible. Th th there are tax uh, uh, exemptions that are being given for, for, for the START initiative pro projects for five years and it's other incentives. It's given, by the way, for the, all, for the whole uh, sector. Okay, uh, the, the industry sector. Yes, the whole yeah. industry sector. Okay. But of course, START initiative is a great opportunity. It's, it's a call for people to stop being isolated and to work together to get better profit and if you, if you have better investment, you'll have better economics of scale, then you'll get your ROI rate of investment in, in a better time, in a higher rate, thus you will win. And needless to say that when you depend on locally manufactured uh, components or spare parts or machines, then you know, you're helping uh, um, uh, in, in all aspects of the economy. 
Now, uh, Dr. Tasneem, I want to go back to the meeting that took place uh, uh, recently the, b between the Prime Minister and the CEO of the General Authority for Investment and Free Zones. Uh, as Dr. Madbouli discussed uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Haber, the, uh, the procedures and measures to improve the investment climate in Egypt, including the uh, mechanism, as uh, I think you um, mentioned, for allocating land for investment projects and developing the system for issuing the required licenses. Uh, could you expand on, uh, on that, please? Okay. First of all, the first step for anyone to start a business is land. You need to have a land to, to build anything. So the land allocation is a real issue in Egypt, especially that most of the people are allocated in Cairo and certain governorates. And there are other governorates that there's, it's a huge free spaces. So it was really great idea when they just initiated the, uh, the new uh, Cairo, the new Egypt, uh, the new uh, Republic. Republic, yes, the new city. Okay. So this is the core idea that we're talking about, land allocation actually. For every governorate, uh, you mean the capital, the administrative the capital, capital? Yes, that's the administrative it. capital. Yes, that's okay. what I'm researching yeah. for that. So uh, it's always the idea is that go away from the core. People are sitting in one place, which is Cairo, and the other governorates. They are not even the population is not really well allocated. The core idea we're talking about is that expansion. You have a great land, do it. And how can you do it? Is that for each specific place and slot of land? There is a certain project which have economic, economic uh, of um, added value. Added value, sir. For each governorate, for example, each government have each governorate in Egypt have special special economies. Right, right. Uh, it have like the furniture industry in Damietta, for yes, instance. Yes, because it yeah. have raw materials. It's near the ports and Petrochemicals so on. Petrochemicals in Suez. In Suez. Yeah. Definitely, this is what we're talking about. Mm. Sugar in places where sugar is being uh, mm. the planted delta, and so yeah. on in the delta and so on. Mm. So this is the core idea where mm. you must have a geographical allocation people, investors outside and inside the place. It's a mm. kind of transparency. Mm. Have to see the freelance. Mm. So according when you view the freelance, you can just state this piece of land, I want it. But after you want it also, you have to see the, um, the, the other, uh, when you need the raw materials, the availability of the raw materials. And even if you are a subcomponent of another industry, it's way better to stay beside the factory that right. you are locating. Right. So ha even when we are thinking about having a green economy, mm. the outcome of other industries that they are gonna just to it's it's it waste for other industries can be a the raw material for another. Mm. By developing a real well developed land allocation. This is the only way to resolve it, mm. making the waste management, developing it, and knowing mm. where are the mm. utilities are. Mm. Allow me to add something more to this. Please. That also, uh, there were a Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry where they stated that they're going to give a grace period mm. to others if they receive the land with no, uh, and it's not yet well uh, utilized. Mm -hmm. And it's stated well utilized. Mm. Not only utilized, it has mm. to be well utilized. They okay. will give a grace period. It shows how keen the government of Egypt is willing to support the investors. Absolutely. This is, this is the first part regarding the land allocation, the second regarding licensing. Yes. Uh, if we're going to talk about the license, actually, the license itself and registration of business in Egypt is being very well developed now. They're having, it's for, it has been a while since you, def, you when you look away f and, and just perceive the Egyptian government at all, the whole government is working and cooperating together. They're talking, there is no more isolation. Despite the fact that even if there are some deficiency, but at least they're overcoming this by the, by the way of having better technology, and this better technology will be allocated beside different authorities are sitting together in order to simplify the license. Mm -hmm. Having a simplified license is a part. Having more incentives is a way better. Having uh, support of the whole government of Egypt to support the licensing is a core issue we're all facing. Mm -hmm. For example, issue the golden license, by the way, is a way to show how simple it is. And this shows that the simplification of procedures Sometimes is way important than the ins incentives. Mm -hmm. 
and, mm -hmm. and this is very important point. Dr. Tasneem, the, 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 the CEO of the General Authority for Investment and Free Zones asserted during the meeting with the Prime Minister that the procedures and measures uh, uh, were essential for marketing and promoting a stable tax system and clear incentives, investment incentives, noting that a joint committee was formed from the Investment Authority and the Tax and Customs Authority for this purpose. Can you tell us about the, the importance of um, such coordination between the Investment Authority and the Tax Authority? One of the main reasons when you go to a market, you have to define how much taxes you're going to pay. And the stability of the uh, the stability of the market is one of the main reasons, by the way, uh, investors come or run away. A stable, an ease of doing business is measured upon how the government perceives the business, knowing mm. that. Mm. If the government perceives the business as a value added, and they see that, there's no need to get taxes now, and it's okay to wait a little bit, and then we will gain more better than taxes, because by the long run, you have a better employment rate, better educated people, the people who are going to have salaries, then they, go, they will go and purchase. So that you have a better purchasement power. Then you will have a market circle, then people will purchase more supply and demand. It's all about the prices. Then you'll have a stable market. Mm. All this comes from where? From just trying to minimize the taxes. The way the government perceive industry or perceive investment itself, this is new to our, to our ears. Because they have perceived investment as a way to develop the social standards, to develop the industries, to develop uh, the system itself, to have a better well culture people. This is what the government is trying to have. Right. So it's really important to talk with the taxes. Mm -hmm. and when any business comes to a new market, they perceive the stability of the market, so mm. knowing that. If I know, for example, that this uh, government will not add any taxes on me for the coming five years, this is mean that you're having a stable market, a mm. stable government. Mm. Not only taxes, by the way, politics itself, mm. how stable the government, right. how stable the political situation in the government, this this definitely affects the investment. The sure. investment are fragile. Even if the foreign direct investment was fixed bonds, if they found out that every day you're doing taxes, you're doing uh, no incentives. And, and when you say stability or stable market, uh, I, I guess um, uh, it has to uh, be also in the legislative uh, domain, right? Unless, of course, the legislation is making things easier and, and easier for business. And, and the way we perceive it is that the government is clearly only uh, 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 using legislation to make business, business easier. Yeah, right? Definitely. Allow mm. me to say, mm. uh, we, uh, whenever we talk about the simplicity, uh, talking about Law 15 for 2017, could you imagine that the law would have the name of simplifying industrial licensing procedures? Mm. The, the name itself yeah. is, is attractive <laughs> is to business. To yeah. business, man. Mm. Taking that when it's the first time, by the way. Before that, you used to have years in order to have a license. Nowadays, you do the simplification of procedures that has been made, which is just simplification of procedures. The government made the simplification of procedures through that law that it became that the industries are subdivided into two parts, high risk and low risk, and depending on the environment impact assessment on the land, according to which all investors came and, and just go through the, the processes. You can have your license in seven days if you mm. are low risk and in 30 days if you are high risk. By the way, this is, you're, you became a benchmark. You became like the best practices, you became like other best practices, Dubai, your European Union, and this law, by the way, comes from hear. the French uh, law. Uh -huh. Yes, it is. It is mm. a real pioneer thing. Talking about the simplification, if you have perceived the government itself have go through two, two uh, ways, 
parallel ways? Yes, yeah? that's the definition. Yeah, I, I, knew, uh, <laughs> I guess because you were drawing parallel lines. Yeah. That's the core yeah. point I'm talking about, being parallel. They go through mm. simplification of procedures and investment incentives. Mm. We have three different incentives, by the way. There are general incentives, specific incentives, and there are other, which is the uh, general, specific, and special incentives. Okay. There are three. Okay. So the general for all investments, the specific are for certain uh, geographical allocations, mm. and then extra for certain activities. Okay. Okay. So mm. and and you can have any yeah, general and and special by together. Right. right. And this, despite the fact that these were there, still the investment was afraid to come. Why? Because of the bureaucracy. Mm. It's not essential to give incentives. Incentive does not mean decreasing the amount of money. By the way, investors are willing to pay more and they can pay more. They just need a clear, transparent method, a clear way of dealing and they will come. And when you simplify the processes and understand that this is a crucial thing and you go through this path, Thus, it's what we were able, by the way, to attract foreign direct investment, to increase the industry, to increase the investment by huge rates. And this is not only... And to only create more jobs. Yes, and create, definitely create huh. more jobs and have a better economy. Indeed. Uh, unfortunately, uh, dear viewers, that's all the time we have for this episode. On behalf of you, we thank you very much. The distinguished guest here in the studio, Dr. Tasneem Khalil, the Senior Advisor for Business, Registration and Licensing. Thank you very much, you, Dr. Sir. Tasneem. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, dear viewers, for watching us next week. Same time is a new episode. Until then, have all the best and goodbye.